What's up, Fachero fam? So when it comes to living in Boston, there are a tremendous amount of slang terms and phrases that people use all the time. And especially because I lived in Boston, people will sometimes hit me up saying, hey Mark, I heard this Bostonian phrase, like can you translate that into plain English? So I figured to make this video. And in this video, I'm gonna give you the 16 most common slang terms used in Boston and their meanings. Number one, Wicked. Now I say wicked all the time as all my subscribers know and I get so much crap for it being out here in LA when I say it. And essentially wicked just means really. So it's not just awesome, it's wicked awesome. It's not just cold or hot, it's wicked cold or wicked hot. And I also find that people use it to like, use it not just as really, but really, really, like really emphasizing something. So if you're talking about a movie, you don't just say, oh yeah, it was a really good movie. You say, oh no, it was a wicked good movie. Number two, Packy. Now Packy refers to a package store and essentially it's a place that you buy alcohol. Now I found that Packy really can be used in two different ways. One, to describe the place itself or two, to describe the act of going there. So people will either say, hey, I'm going to the Packy store. Does anyone need anything for tonight? Or B, people sometimes say like, hey, I'm doing a Packy run. I don't need anything or sometimes People even just drop out the word run and say, hey, I'm doing a packy. I don't need any alcohol for tonight. Number three, bang or yui. Now, Boston drivers have been referred to as some of the worst drivers in America, which was is not true. There's a lot of aggressive drivers in Boston, I will say that. But hands down, LA has the worst amount of drivers by far. But anyway, jumping back to this, bang the yui basically refers to basically just taking a U-turn. And I feel like this is kind of common, like when you just have to pull a U-turn wherever, but it's way more common in Boston. The main reason why is if you think of a city like New York, which is very logically laid out, right? If you miss a turn, you just go around the block and get back to where you were. But because Boston obviously originally had horses and carriages and then they paved the roads, driving in Boston is a nightmare. It makes absolutely zero sense. Even for me, after living in Boston for so long, I'll still use my GPS to get around. And so many times in Boston, there are times where you miss a turn and it adds like 20 minutes onto your route because you can't just go around. You have to do this huge circuitous route. So everyone be like, hey, you know what? Just bang a UE and it'll be easier to get to where we need to go. Number four, mass hole. Now, as weird as it sounds, mass hole is actually a compliment when it comes to living in Boston. I mean, there are actually shirts, bumper stickers. I mean, so much paraphernalia that just has, yeah, I'm a mass hole. Put right on it. And essentially, it just makes it one of those things where it comes to living in Boston that you're like, yeah, hey, I'm a asshole. I'm kind of a jerk. It's part of living in Boston. Number five, the big dig. Now, the big dig is kind of a big joke when it comes to Boston. It was essentially a construction project where they want to take one of the most popular highways in Boston and put it underground. And it was supposed to take, I can't remember what the expected time of it was, it was supposed to take only a couple years was only supposed to cost a certain amount of money. But then over time, it took like years to finish. I, I honestly, it might still be going on. I honestly have no idea. I don't even think anybody in Boston really knows if the big dig is still happening or not. I think it's done, but no one really knows. But it was the typical situation of a construction project where like, oh yeah, it's only gonna take a couple years, only cost this amount of money. And it exceeded a tremendous amount of time that they thought it was going to and spent an astronomical, way more amount of money than they ever expected. Number six, hoodsy. Now hoodsy can basically have three different meanings when it comes to using it in Boston, and then for very, very different things. The first is this is awesome mini ice cream cup. I remember getting them all the time in like middle school and elementary school. That's usually a blend of vanilla and chocolate. And you get this wooden, awkward wooden spoon thing that was just, it was like a weird, I don't know how to describe the shape of it. It was just a weird shape, almost like a figure eight shape kind of, and you would basically eat the ice cream like that. The second is basically can be used as a term of a sweatshirt that has a hood. So very different than a hoodie, it's really just a sweatshirt with a hood attached to it, usually without like this kind of pockets thing right here. And lastly, number three, hoodsie can be referred to a derogatory, it's kind of a derogatory term, referring to younger girls who only go for older guys. So they'd be like, oh, there's a group of hoodies over there. They're just trying to go for these older men who have money or whoever the case is. Number seven, frap, spelled F-R-A-P-P-E. 
And I want to make a huge distinction that if you go to Boston and you see that word, don't say frappe or frappe. People will immediately know you're not from Boston. Now, frapp refers to a specific type of drink. Now, according to the American Heritage uh, College Dictionary, I have the definition pulled up here, a milkshake is a beverage that is made of milk, ice cream, and often flavoring, and is blended or whipped until foamy. Now, in New England, a milkshake does not include ice cream. Adding the ice cream makes it a frap. So in a weird sort of perspective, a frap is a milkshake everywhere else. So if you're looking for like a milkshake, just an actual regular milkshake, you want to say frap. However, when it comes to New England, if you say, hey, I want a milkshake, it's going to be all the ingredients except the ice cream. Number eight, so don't I. Now this one was the ones that I never even noticed that I said a lot until I actually researched some of the slang terms for this video. And obviously it's super improper grammar, but it's Boston, like whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so don't I means yeah, me too. So it's like, if like say someone says, uh, hey, you know what, like I really wanna go out tonight. Someone would be like, oh, so don't I, like where should we go? Should we go to Fenway? Should we go to Brighton and go to the college bars on there? You know, I'm down to go out wherever. Number nine, the blank. Now what I mean by this, I'm gonna make this true for other cities, is that when it comes to going to various different things in Boston, a lot of things are shortened. And this is a big way to kind of tell if someone's from Boston or not. So for example, if I talk about Cape Cod, it's not Cape Cod, it's the Cape. If I'm gonna take the MBTA, which is the subway in Boston, I'm gonna not take the MBTA, I'm taking the T. If I'm gonna be driving on 90 East or West, which is referred to as the Mass Pike, I don't say 90 East or West, you can, but it's not really referred to as mass pike, it's referred to as the pike. So a lot of times in Boston, there are a lot of different like shortened words that we use. Same thing with Dunkin' Donuts, for example. Now I guess, side note, I guess Dunkin' Donuts changed their name to just Dunkin', which is kind of weird. That's a whole other topic for a whole other video. But anyway, so instead of saying Dunkin', people just say it sometimes, they'll say either Dunkies or Dunks. I guess you could say Dunkin' works too, but obviously some people will, I feel like a lot of girls will be like, I got my Dunkies and, yeah, but you could say Dunkin', Dunks, or Dunkies, but also like any other city, I feel like for certain landmarks or certain places, instead of saying the full phrase, they'll shorten them. Number 10, Pissa. Now besides Wicked, I feel like Pissa is probably one of those iconic Boston slang terms. And Pissa basically means something that's really good, and it's also usually paired with the term Wicked and use it to describe something else. So I could be like, oh, the Boston Red Sox are wicked pissa. You can say it's like, oh, really awesome or really good. Now, pissa, similar to other words in the English language, can also be used sarcastically. So you know how, like say something's happening and it's a bad thing, you're like, oh, great, right? Obviously, great is used in a sarcastic way to mean, oh, that kind of sucks. So the same thing is like say you're, um, like, let's say your car's getting towed. So you become in Boston, because parking in Boston is horrible. But anyway, let's say your car's getting towed. Someone's like, hey, dude, your, your car just got towed. You'd be like, ah, oh, wicked piss. Uh, all right, well, let's go get it, right? So you can kind of use it, not only to describe something that's awesome, but using some slang, you can use it to also describe something that's really bad. Number 11, nip or nips. Now, nips are used to describe these, basically small alcohol bottles. I forgot, or I didn't know actually, that not everywhere else in the country referred to these as nips. Because the first time I came to LA, one of the first times I ever bought alcohol in LA, and this is a true story by the way, I went to the store and I got basically like a big uh, bottle of, I think it was like vodka or something like that, and I wanted to get a couple nips. So the lady's like, all right, uh, your total is blank and blank, do you want anything else? And I was like, ah, uh, can I just have like a couple nips to go if that's okay? And she was like, sir, that's very inappropriate. Also thinking I was talking about something very different. <laughs> and I was like, no, like, you know, the two small balls of alcohol. And she goes, oh, I thought he meant something different. And I was like, no. And then there was a huge line behind me. They were all laughing. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. I just moved here from Boston. What do you guys call these? And people didn't really, some people were like, well, we don't really call them anything. And I got a bunch of different responses. Some people say they didn't call them anything at all. Other people said they called like shooters, airline bottles, uh, miniatures or minis. So there's obviously a bunch of different terms. When it comes to Boston, and especially a lot of areas in New England, these are called nips. Number 12, clicker. Now this is another one of those phrases that I 
thought everyone else used, but especially being in LA, when I've said it, people are like, what are you talking about? So a clicker basically refers to the remote control for a TV. And there's been a lot of times where I've been at people's house, I'm like, hey, where's your clicker? I just wanna change the channel or whatever. I'll just say in general, I guess, where's your clicker? People are like, what are you talking about? What's a clicker? And I'm like, really? You don't know what a clicker is? So basically refers to basically the remote control for any TV. Number 13, yuppie. Now yuppie is a bit of a derogatory term and it usually refers to basically somebody who's not from the area. This is very commonly used in Southie or basically South Boston, but if you want to speak true Bostonian, say the term Southie. Now I feel like Southie is the most Boston area of Boston, if that makes sense. And it's just kind of its own culture and climate and personality style. And people in Southie call other people yuppies who are usually not from there. And it's used very similarly to basically Harry Potter and muggles, right? If For people in Harry Potter, the wizards and everything, they'll be like, oh, look at this muggle, they're doing uh. Same thing in Southie where people are like, oh my God, check out this yuppie, not from the area, they're trying to figure out where to go, we want to go to Lincoln or Loco, but they're hogging up the line. Like, that's how people in South use your to as. It's a very big derogatory term, basically describing somebody who's usually not from there. Number 14, rotary. Now, a rotary basically refers to a roundabout, looks like this, very, very common driving kind of landscape and setup. Uh, but especially when it comes to Boston, there are a tremendous amount of these. I feel like it's probably just as much rotaries as there are traffic lights just makes the traffic flow easier and obviously they're very common in other areas but they're commonly referred to as rotaries in boston and other parts of new england number 15 nor'easter now a nor'easter basically refers to a wicked big and usually a horrible storm of like a bunch of things happening at once like a blizzard high winds maybe a hurricane or whatever basically just a bunch of horrible horrible weather conditions all happening at the same time to be honest, I don't know what the true scientific weather definition is of a nor'easter. I don't even think anybody in Boston does either. But basically, anytime someone says, oh, there's going to be a nor'easter this weekend, people are just like, all right, it's going to be like horrible weather out. And last, but definitely not least, number 16, candle pin bowling. Now, this is one that isn't really a slang term or phrase. It's more for you as an activity. Now, in case you're curious, like, wait, Mark, like, what is candle pin bowling compared to regular bowling. Now, as you can see from the picture, candle pin bowling basically refers to the same exact thing as bowling, except the pins are like super, super thin, basically looking like a candlestick, and the balls are super small as well. I guess candle pin bowling, doing some research, happens a lot in New England, and I guess some parts of Eastern Canada, but that's about it. Like candle pin bowling is really only kind of concentrated in that one area of the world, not really anywhere else. So especially like say you're going to Boston for the first time and your friends say, hey, you know, let's go bowling. But instead, let's go candle pin bowling. You know exactly what they're talking about. But anyway, those are basically my 16 slang terms and phrases that I want to describe translating Bostonian to plain English. Hopefully this was helpful. And in addition to, are there any unique slang terms that you use in your city? Post them in the comments because I'd love to hear them.